that's how I knew we are going to start catching fish. That's what we've been missing the whole time. That's what we've been missing. I can tell you what I'm missing, a fly. Just drop it, break it. Drop it, perfect. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Sorry, I'm driving, so I'm literally trying to navigate through Houston. So looking and texting <laughs> is kind of difficult. So a few months ago, Adam hit me up. He had this idea of doing a collaboration on a merch drop. He wanted to fish the tarpon migration, so he booked the flights a couple months later in the peak of tarpon season. The flight was delayed, so we only had about an hour of daylight left to fish. Then get seven or eight years since I cast a fireway. Felt good. <laughs> Felt real good. A little softer than I expected. Someone's gonna catch a tarpon. I'd rather it be him. I've, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm some experienced tarpon angler, but I've caught a tarpon and Steven hasn't. So, you know, if you go somewhere new with your buddy, you want him to, you know, catch the fish, do the thing. So, that's kind of what we're doing. Tarpon will like to get up in these trees over here this late in the evening. It's been a little cloudy and rainy today, so the tarpon, you know, kind of migrate up, and they they like that ambush attack coming down on the fish like a like a bird. Eagles do it that way, so um, that's kind of what we're working with tonight. Hard out here for a fam. We're here with Eric, who took us to the worst spots to fish in Miami. <laughs> Just kind of giving us the tour where not to go. And I like this to start with because it makes you, one, appreciate the fish more when you actually go to the good spots and catch them. But it also, you know, systematically you start crossing the places to fish off the list when at the end of your trip you're left with only good spots. Honestly, um, he's got his fish in some drainage uh, ditches over here. So I really don't know if he knows what he's actually doing out here. So we uh, launched the skiff, we got out there, we had a couple hours in the morning before the weather pushed in. Immediately, uh, we spotted a 70 pounder sitting on the bottom. Steve dropped the fly on him. But the fish just didn't take it. So we moved on to the next spot. We found a school of tarpon. Steve makes a cast in there, hooks up, pops him off immediately. Bad weather started to push in, so we decided to hit the streets instead. I like that. That's a good. That's a good Great camera shot. angle. Great shot. At some point, I gotta start fishing. All right, we're learning from the man himself. He's gonna let the fly drop. He's gonna let it marinate a little bit. Get there. Let it marinate. And you hit it with a little twitch. Twitch. It's gotta marinate some more. Twitch, 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 and that's how you don't catch a fish. Beautifully done. That's Beautifully done. Job. What did you just lose, bro? Peacock. Peacock? He came up for where I did exactly what you did and let it drop down below him. Bumped it back up and he just swung around and I don't know if he rejected the last second or, you know, I got little jittery you got, fingers. You gotta hit it with a, a trout set meets a strip set. We call it the strout set. The strout set. You gotta do the strout set to get the peacocks to stick. Peacock right there. See him right there? Those are easy catch. They're hanging right on them rocks. Right on the rock? Right on them rocks. Let it get down a little bit before you bring it. Now twitch it. He's on it, twitch. Twitch it. Oh, he had it for a second, you saw it? Yeah, I saw him. I decided to grab the fly rod and show Steve how to trigger the bite on the peacocks. It could be tricky if you've never done it before. See how it's done? Immediately. That was well played. 
in the mouth. It's not like uh, I didn't snag them. First uh, peacock bass on the fly. Um, that took me longer than I expected to. Uh, they were a little bit trickier than I thought, but finally, after some perseverance, we got it. Thank you, Eric, for uh, teaching me the ways here. <laughs> and there's a couple more right here if somebody wants to catch them, literally in these rocks. Bring it this way, and then if you pop it too much, you'll catch. If you won't catch it, but if you pop it too little, you won't catch it either. And you need to like half step the strip, the, the pop, little pop action. Half the pop and then pop, you pop. You know, the pop, 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 pop. The full pop, and then sometimes you pop too much yep. and too little, and exactly. So we got the fish right there. How in the world did these fish ever eat? So Adam's gonna change rods now to one that's actually got a, a peacock fly on it. He says this fly sucks, but it's actually a very good snook and tarpon fly. But it's a very good snook and tarpon fly, not a good peacock fly. I mean, it'll get the job done. But he's going to my uh, what I call the tootsie roll. Because it's like that. Exactly, yeah. I have yeah. the cotton candy, sweet and low, and the tootsie roll. But, oh. Oh. Basically, it was a tootsie yeah. roll. Heard, saw, heard the song, but it was the wrong color. Yeah. Oh, he had it again. T -t -t you would have just like, uh, he would have been like, uh, uh. <laughs> So we went off to the next spot. We were greeted by a big school of snooks sitting right at this culvert. Oh, dude, there's like a hundred, not really a hundred. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, as far as you see, is a sophomore. There's like kind of sticking in there. So Steve is uh, casting at these snooks, and they're not really taking the fly. They're following it, but not committing to it. So then Adam decides, oh, you're gonna have to change the fly on that. We have a bunch of snooks stacked up over here by the culvert, and shot a few bow and arrow casts at them and just not taken. So we decided to change up flies, unfortunately. We don't have a line cutter, so we're trying to be cavemen out here and drag it across the concrete, trying to break it with whatever, anything we got. Steve manages to break the fly off, but then he can't get the loop nut off. I still have the looped uh, from our no slip mono loop knot, and so now we're just trying to cut the leader so that we can tie on a new fly. We'll keep you updated. But I've got a brand new leader on this, so we won't have to cut it. Okay. What the f Why didn't you just put a fly in that to begin with? <laughs> because you told me not to. You, you told me that we couldn't put it... But why are you having him change the fly when you could have just put a fly on that one? <laughs> Was it... It's not cut. Yes, the fly is cut. But the f loop is stuck on there. Well, yeah, but... We could have had two rods. You do it. You do it. I'm done. I'm not some sort of expert like you. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. This is what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I didn't know. Here, if you hold that. Well, all I'm saying is if you put us on fish, we'd catch him, but... We've put him on a lot of fish. A lot of shots, and he's has, has made it happen. I mean, yeah. if you had those shots, it'd be a different day altogether. Right, right. Yeah, if I'd been on the front of the boat up there... In my defense, they weren't even filming when I was fishing, so that's how little faith they had in me. That's true. So I got stuck in a tree for like the third time and uh, I had to pull in it pretty damn hard. Opened up the hook quite a bit, but the leader didn't pop. Pretty strong leader as these guys tie. That's about the best thing I could say about our experience today. Day three. Here we are. I'm getting rained out, but we're trying to make the best of it. I've had about four or five little tiny tarpon bites. Oh, here he goes. That might be a snook or a little tarpon. Looks like a little tarpon, there you go. I'm not saying we want to make him look giant, but what I'm saying is I don't want your head <laughs> to be the main, the closest thing to the lens and make it look like a... We're on, baby. We're on the board. Thanks to my guide. <laughs> we couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> it's only taken three days. I told him I was looking for triple digits and... <laughs> He provided. He wanted triple digits, pristine, crystal clear water, coming down on a string, migrating tarpon. 
And we caught one. That's exactly what we got. I'm gonna break it out for Audrey. All right, guys, let me know how it goes. Can we hold that for I don't know how. Well, All right. you know the drill. What we got to do. Keep them tight, keep them tight. Point your rod. Is your first saltwater fish on fly? Yep. I finally landed one. A little yep. guy. But hey, yep. now we're just gonna try to make him bigger. And you couldn't even hold him up for the shot. But that's fine. We got it on camera. Woo. All right. Finally, a saltwater fish on the fly. First one ever. All right, now let's awesome. get out of here and go somewhere else. You want to split one of these apps? Yeah, I'm getting the crook at this. Uh, yeah, I had no idea what this was. It's a croquetta. Yeah, well, it's good. They just deep fried ham. Like, how can that be bad? Time, mom and poppy come visit. They always. Uh, 